to believe that the Holy Spirit can speak even to the young ones. Or oh, when, when, when Samuel's big sons and the prophet himself, Eli himself, was going through a bad patch, God spoke to a kid that was just being weaned from his mother. And the kid heard the voice of God. And I pray in some supernatural, special way that our children will hear the voice of God. But this passage uh, continues to bring, I've referred it to it a number of times. Um, I actually have two messages over here. I'm going to, uh, but I'm going to share this very briefly for you. Um, yeah, you can, you, can, you can give out that ushers at the back, the fivefold mission of the church. We gave it out at AMM. Can you to give it out this morning also? I, might, I will touch on that somewhere uh, as we go forward. But this amazing passage, the disciples are talking to Jesus. And look at what Jesus said. And the Lord said, Luke chapter 17, verses 6 to 10. If you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and, in the, and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Suddenly he changes from that. Begins to talk about something else. Watch carefully what he talks to his disciples. They were all concerned about faith. Lord, give us faith. Jesus, speak faith into us so we can change things all around us. And so they're moving with this whole concern. We need to see a faith that will do, do different things and move the mountains and, and our ministry will go strong. And while they are so concerned about having the right kind of faith to go out and push the mountains and pluck the mulberry trees and serve God and do all these big things for God, Jesus turns the conversation and begins to say something else for them. He says, Will any of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him, when he's come home, come in from the field, come at once, recline at the table, will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, dress properly, serve me while I eat and drink, and afterwards you will eat and drink also. Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also. When you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. I pray in Jesus' name that this scripture just settle into your spirit. Because as I, as I look back, as I look back over life, as I look back over the seasons of my life, as I look back over the things of serving God, as I look back over doing this thing, this various things, so many times we assume that, oh God, you must be so pleased with the fact that we pastored a church, that we planted churches, that we went out into missions, that we done this, that we done that. There was miracles and there was signs and there was this and that. And so many times, I don't know about you, beloved, but so many times when we go out and do a couple of things in God's vineyard, we come back and we just hope that God will say, Oh, well done. You have done so good. Now go home. And somewhere... The picture there of God and his people is not a picture. God's, Jesus is telling his disciples, I want you to understand, this is not a master-slave scenario. This is not a business owner and business manager and worker scenario. In a business and worker and a master and slave scenario, oh, you've done the job, fine, bye, see you, go home, take good rest. If you need some annual leave, let us know. If you need some casual leave, let us know. We'll grant you the leave. But thank you for working your eight hours. Please just go home and rest. Jesus is turning it around. Jesus is swinging the whole picture around. Jesus is swinging around and says, I am not the type of person who will take you, who will use you, and after you got your job done, I will say, Tata, bye-bye, go back home. And sometimes you and I might look at it, oh, this is looking terrible. The guy has worked whole day in your field. He has plowed. He's looked after all your crazy sheep running all over the hill style. He's gone all over the place. He's worked so hard for you. Now he comes back to you. You're looking at him and saying, hey guy, your work is not finished. 
go and prepare some food for me. Have a nice wash, freshen yourself. Come looking nice and handsome and beautiful. Sit with me, serve me, and then you can eat also. It's a very beautiful picture. It's a very beautiful picture. We don't do that with our wives, by the way, okay? Look nice, my dear wife, sit with me, serve me, and after I finish eating, you can eat the remaining. No, no. Don't take that model and say it's a Jesus model. No, 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 no. This perfect love here. This perfect love here. This beautiful love here. There's an amazing love just here. He's looking to them and he's beginning to talk to them and he says, he asks them two questions. What will you say to your servant? What will you say to your servant when he comes back? He says, you know what I'll say to him? You worked in my field. I never saw you. I will reap your labor. All your hard work I will get profit from. I will pay you salary. I will pay you this. But I've, I never got to see you in the field. I never got to see you while you struggled in the, in the outhouse. Come and sit close to me. Come and stay close to me. I don't want only the sheep to eat out of your hands. I don't want only my ground to be blessed out of the crop that you've sown and the hard work you've done. I don't want everything you've done to just go into the field and into the ministry and to all those kind of things. I want you to come back. I want to eat from your hand. Master, you don't need to eat from my hand. You can, go, you can go to the best of places. You can have the best of the meat. You can have the best of the service. You can have the best of the best of the best serving you. The best people serving you. The best dressed people serving you. The best food in town. The best menu to pick, to pick out from. He says, no, not interested. I want to sit with you across the table. I want to see you eye to eye. I want to hear your voice. I want to have your hands fill my plate. I, I want to eat what you have made. I want to talk about what you have done for me, not what you have done for my field. Isn't that beautiful this morning? I don't know about you, but it, it tells me something amazing. It tells me something amazing. And I, I've been through a kind of real rough time this last almost 10, 12 days and just struggling to make it through that AMM meeting last Sunday. My body was just given way and this whole week I've not been at office at all. Uh, I know that when I stand here, there's an anointing. It's way beyond my body just now. My body is like, go back. you should be sleeping in bed right now. But I've, as I was looking at all that, God looks at me and says, I want my personal time with you. Hallelujah. I want my personal time with you. God, we went to church. Lord, we read our Bible. You know, many times you can read your Bible but not have personal time with the Lord. And then you, it becomes a struggle. And then prayer becomes a struggle. And suddenly mommy becomes the nag of the house because she's nagging everybody to, let's pray, let's read the Bible together, let's have family devotion. Because we lost the charm of sitting at the table and says the king of kings, he made the rivers, he made the seas, he made the stars. He's got angels, angels that fed his prophets, angels that can feed him whatever he wants. And that God of wonder and power and majesty is looking in my face and your face and says, you know what I'm asking you? Will you open your hands? 
Will you open your heart? Will you sit at the table with me? Will you serve me? Will you feed me? It's not just another kind of process. You'll go home and, and look at what I'm giving your family. Say, Lord, thank you very much for the food on the table. God bless us as we eat. He says, no. I want to eat out of your hands. And beloved, just want to bring back to our church this morning just two points. And I'll close very quickly. Just two points. Have we had the joy of going beyond the religious practice of church, of God, you know, I'm going to sleep tonight. I am so tired. We were with Samir the whole afternoon on the worship team. Yes. And God says, I know you came from the field. Come. Go and have a good wash. Refresh yourself. I don't know about you, but I fail to do that many times. I'm like, no good wash. It's like, oh, God. I'm so tired, God. I know you're tired. You just came from the field. Get up. It's 10 o'clock in the night. You know, if your boss calls from office, the way you'll jump and answer that phone. I don't want to be boss just now. I want to be your friend. I don't want to be the manager, the king of kings, ruler of the world. I want to sit with you as family. I want your Christianity, your spirituality to, to come down those notches. I want personal relationship. I want family time. I want one-on-one -on -one time. I want what you can give to me personally. We say that, right? He's our personal God, right? Personal God, personal God, personal God. I want what you can give me personally. It's, it's, it's a beautiful picture that you say. Let's, let's you know, th that part that you've done in the field is about salary. That part you get your wages for. This part, you don't get wages for it. And, 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 I, and I've noticed sometimes, you know, uh, the workers are always waiting. 5.30, let's get home. And by 5 o'clock, there's a slow wind down. And by 5.15, there's, you get into the restroom and you start washing your face. And you start dusting your clothes. And the moment it hits that 5.30, I remember when I was in the factory working, by 5.30, 20, all the cycles, like 100 cycles are lined up in front of the gate. Everyone waiting just to beat the place and run home. And then just imagine the, the big boss, the manager comes walking around the cycles. He says, let's go for a cup of chai. And, and I remember those times when we would forget it was 5.30. You know why? I don't know. It usually happens that, that the bosses remember to talk to their workers only at just in that last moment when you want to hit the gate. He says, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk personally. Let's talk one-on-one. -on -one. And so often we come to give God last parts that are so Baked and cooked in tiredness and lethargy. And our relationship with God is so much of, listen, I'll do some things for you. And God looks beyond all that service. And all that you and I can do in the ministry and in different places. And he tells Peter, after you've done all that stuff, go and feed my sheep. Because when you feed my sheep, you are feeding me. 
and would love to just relook at Christianity. Christianity is not about those laws and those rules and performing those rituals and getting out there and doing just doing what God wants us to do. There's a call. There's a call after everything is over. And the call says, come to the table. Because I am longing to receive from you. And I pray in Jesus' name this morning that as we look at life, as we look at Christianity, as we look at our devotion, somewhere go back home and pray, God, why has looking into your eyes become so difficult? Why is it, God, that spending time with you has become difficult? You know, God, ask us to go out and do some things. And there are a lot of people who are willing to just go out and do some things for God. Today, a study even says that 80% of pastors spend less than 15 minutes in prayer. Less than 15 minutes. I'm not talking about ordinary. I don't like that word layman because we are a priesthood of believers. We can go, we can preach for hours. We can sit in the offices, we can do different things. And everybody wants to, what do I need to do for God? Some even don't even do anything in the field sometimes. And he looks at them and says, I'm not asking what you are doing for my ministry. I'm asking what you're doing directly for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, somewhere to be able to continue to look at it, you, you and I can give our children all the money, all the finance, all the breaks, then send them to the best of colleges, send them to the best of places. But at the end of the day, after they've gone to the best of places, best of colleges, best of this, best of that, there's only one thing that the child was looking for. Will my parent spend time with me? Oh, I'll tell you one thing. If I could do it all again, I'll do that part quite differently. I know the church has been a special part of my heart. But I would definitely balance that differently. I would, I would want to be there to just, to just be there for every event. Daddy was at prayer meeting when I was doing my 200 meter dash. Nice, I f it feels very spiritual. But I also tell you, it feels very empty. It feels very empty. And God is not looking. God is not looking for if we could get busy for God. If we could, God, you know, I, 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 I got baptized. I, I, I started attending a church and, and then I got filled with the Holy Spirit and, and then I spoke in tongues. I love those words that Solomon writes. He brought me to his banqueting table. Hallelujah. And his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Yeah, my son, work is over. That whole aspect of you being a good and faithful worker, all that is over. Come away. So many times in that book of Ecclesiastes and, and so many times in the Song of Songs, come away with me, my love. 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 Just wanna, I just want to leave that one point with you this morning. Come away with me, my love. Go wash your face. Cook up something else for me. Bring it to the table. 
And I love that song that we sang. Samir, that whole theme just kept going on, just keep going gone, just keep going, kept going on. Because somewhere you look in and he says, yeah, when you're coming to me and say, you know, Lord, today we, 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 we went through 50 acres and we done this in the land and we done this with the sheep and we done that. He says, stand before me and say, we are unworthy servants. We only done what we had to do. I believe there's two parts to that. One is at least qualifying to be an unworthy servant. Do we qualify to be an unworthy servant? At least, at least let's qualify with the first part. And the second part. We done only what we had to do. What you require us to do. And, and, and now so what is it you want? You want something that is not part of what you require. It's what we require. He's giving us the hint. He's giving us the hint. He's saying, he's saying you know, the first part is what I required of you. You did what you were told to do. You, you, you just stayed on, we, you just done the duty of a Christian. Now come and perform the life encounter of one that is in love with God. One that is in love with God. In First AG Church, something in my heart is reaching forward. And something in my heart is continuing to say, is it not amazing what God has done for us? Is it not amazing the way God is leading us? The way we, we, we get, the, the way God has opened ways in wildernesses, through the seas, through the rivers. God has done so many great things in our life. And we can sit and boast about it. Or we can sit and hear the words, Come away with me, my love. I like the words in Proverbs. He says, you notice in the Bible, so many times these two words come together. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Bind them around your heart. Let love and faithfulness. Think of those pictures. Think of a man who's marrying a woman and says, Woman, from today I'll be faithful to you. He doesn't look at another woman. I don't know, I, I've said it before. The counseling opportunity, wife and husband land up in the, with the counselor and he says, looks at the woman and says, what's the problem? Is your husband gambling? Is your husband drinking? No. Does he bring his money home? Yes. Has he invested everything in the family? Yes. What's your problem then? So tell me what's your problem. It's been 17 years. I've never heard him say, he loves me. And a man who lives his life purely by faithfulness can run a military academy in his house. Because it's all about faithfulness. 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 There's no time to let the guard down. There's no time to love. On the other hand, we can have a poor man. Another side of a problem that we've encountered in counseling. What's the problem? Tell us. Does he bring you flowers? Yes, he brings me flowers. Yes, he, 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 he tells me he loves me. But pastor, there's a woman in the workplace. And so... Come on, don't you love your wife? Pastor, I love my wife, but I also love the woman in the office. You don't want a divorce? No, I don't want a divorce. I don't want to get separated from my wife. And so there's love. 
but there's no faithfulness. I want you to carry that picture between us and God. Somebody who's only talking about faithfulness to God. I don't steal. I did not commit adultery. I did not murder. And you quote those Ten Commandments. Uh, John the Baptist says, white and tombstone. He says, because thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's, that's what God is looking for. That's what I want to release into June, the month of June. If there's a message that God wants me to release to myself, to our leadership, to our people, it is, it's that ability to look and say, you are not just looking for faithfulness, you're looking for lovers. You're looking for lovers, hallelujah. You're looking for lovers. I, I am an unworthy worker. Why unworthy? Because I done all the work that you asked me to do. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I, I went to church. I'm an unworthy worker. So it's coming. My beloved is mine. And I am his, and his banner over me is love. It's love. You can speak in tongues the whole day. Apostle Paul says, you can speak in tongues the whole day. You can, you can drive out demons the whole day. You can, you can prophesy the whole day. But if you have not love, I am a faithful, noisy gong, a clanging symbol, something that has no meaning that is in the category of unworthy. Because what the master is looking is he's looking for your heart. He's looking for your affection. He's looking for my passion for him. He's looking for something much deeper. Mouth service, lip service, hand service, mind service. I can theologize all sorts of things about God. I want heart service. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind it like tablets to your heart. Put it like a chain around your neck. Hard pictures, right? I don't like that chain around your neck kind of thing. You put chains around the dog's neck. And he says, yes. And when you put the chain, let love and faithfulness be the thing that pulls you around into the presence of God, out into the world, there into your families, into everything that we do, to be able to look and say, we are unworthy servants, we have only done what is our duty. Teach us, Lord, to go beyond duty just now. How's your, how's your spirituality? How's your spirituality this morning? Are you doing the things that you believe, if I do these things, I'll be okay with God? Or is there something in your spirituality and my spirituality that this morning that says, I just love to be in your presence. I just love it, God. Not sure why today prayer life is getting hard. Not sure why spending time with you getting a little difficult. Let's go humbly before God this morning. Love and faithfulness together is a powerful combination to making a man and woman of God. The husband that loves his wife, together with being faithful to her, will provide for her like a queen. And she will provide for her husband as of her own soul. And the children and the family and the house of God and the house of God. 
and the house of God, and the house of God, and the house of God. Just quickly jump to those slides. I'm closing just now, very quickly. Jump to those slides very quickly. And the house of God, just jump, jump out of that. I'm not going to do that vision, fivefold vision of the church. I'm just, I'm just going to the end. My time is over. I have, just go straight to those, go, 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 go. Yes. Yes. Go to that. Before that. Before that. The first one. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. The house of God. We're hitting a 45% irregular to Sabbath. Regular Sabbath is only 40% in, in the house. I shared this at annual members meeting. And I said, there's a tug of war. I love and faithfulness. I don't know, I'm looking at both and saying, can you love God and not be faithful? Unable to come 5% ministry commitments, at least 10% are out. You know, if we had all our members here, we should be sitting in the balcony also. We have children in the house. We should be halfway down that balcony just now. Go to the next slide. Regularly late, 38%. Occasionally late, 21%. You think? You think we're stuck with a spirituality that is doing some stuff for God. But when he says, dress up, refresh yourself. My body is my church. Come. Come. Come fresh. Don't come dying into the church because you watch TV all night. Come. Come and enjoy my presence. Come and enjoy my presence. Sometimes I look, I start reading the word of God itself. Some people are already winter wonderland. Because you spent the night, you spent the night not loving his presence. I guarantee if you spent the night even till two o'clock in the night with Jesus, you will not come to the church and just doze off. You're a mad person in love with him. I'm looking at that picture and I'm saying don't do just the things that you think you have to do to behave to be, be a Christian many of us are just, just trying to make it on the skin of our teeth and I asked in the annual members meeting if you and I want to change that how much time precious time will we spend at the table in personal intimacy with the father so many Christians don't read their Bible, don't pray. They come to church because that they believe is going to take them to heaven. And we as a church are doing bad at that also. And I'm looking at that last little child uh, uh, that is over there. And I'm looking at in the total hours of the year, you have 8,760, 2,080, 24% in your office. Travel, 77.2. Food, around 6.25. Restaurants, about 2.4. But a person that comes only to church every Sunday, only to church every Sunday, gives to God 1.2% of their time. 1.2%. And you know what the cry in most churches are? Give us one hour service with 15 minutes message. We want to take that figure below one. Church must go below one. 1 1.2%. And I asked the church, I said, will you give next year 5%? Make that chart, okay? Officers, but to God and to church, I'll at least give 5%. I'll at least give 5%. And you know what I asked as a pastor? Give another 1.2%. What does God want of your life? What does God want of my life? If after all that I've done, I can go and stand before him and say, Lord, I'm an unworthy servant. I only did what I had to do. 